invited they, Libra yeah. across the wall by those guys because they didn't know any better that they were the those two others were invited over to the other side. So the magic that's there didn't so prevent we, them. We didn't let the right ones in. No, Apparently. they let the white ones in. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Where could you go? <laughs> Warning, the following show will spoil the hell out of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire books and the TV show A Game of Thrones. Also, you're probably going to find a fuck ton of bad language. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Death and boobies, 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 death and boobies. Hello and welcome back to the Ironwood Network Book Club. I'm your host, Lady Wyvern, and with me today is Widow Wolfsbane and Maester Ironwood. How are you guys today? Fantastic. Doing a lot better because it's not a Sansa chapter. That's true. It's a John yeah. chapter. Yeah. It is a John chapter. It's a chapter. long fucking chapter, though. Yes, with a yeah. lot very of shit long. Going on. But John and Danny chapters are the best ever, so. Well, she's uh, fangirling over here. Not that, that. No, I'm just saying that they're the best two characters. They're my favorite. Well, second and third favorites. We all know Sandor's number one. Yeah, but he doesn't get chapters. <laughs> so. He doesn't get chapters. So depressed about that. Oh my goodness. I'd much rather have Sander chapters than Danny chapters, so. See? We can agree on that. I can't. Just saying. I would also rather have Sander chapters than Sansa chapters. Well, I would rather mm. have, like, fucking, I don't know, sea merchant, sea urchin chapters than Sansa chapters, so. <laughs> yeah, just go watch those uh, videos I've been posting on Facebook about the sea frogs. <laughs> I'll have it. Oh, the, the, the true facts videos? <laughs> I love that news. I'll take a, I'll take a Kraken <laughs> chapter over a Sansa chapter. Even though it, doesn't it's say, it doesn't say anything. It's fair. Except what is dead may never die. I'll literally take a Hodor chapter <gasps> over, a Sansa, over a Sansa chapter. I think everyone wants a Hodor chapter. Right? Just It's just one word, Hodor, and hmm. then the, the chapter's done. No, it's done. multiple pages of just Hodor. It's multiple Hodor. pages of just Hodor. <laughs> With appropriate punctuation, of course. Well, no, everything Hodor says would be Hodor, but Not- the chapters aren't told first person. That's They're true. They're told third person. That's true. So, it still unless be all like Hodor chapter. thinks is Hodor, the third person will at least describe what he's doing. I think and then every time he... Hodor speaks, it will say Hodor. I don't know. So, like, Hodor is, like, grooming the stables and singing, Hodor, 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 Hodor. Hmm. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, it'd be an interesting chapter. I think we would have, I think we should have that chapter. <laughs> he's dead. We can't really. No, he's not. Oh, wait, no, he's not dead in the books, is he? No. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Oh, okay. He's still alive. He's frowning at my incompetence. Oh. No, he's frowning at Hodor <laughs> dying. I don't want Hodor to die. Yeah, because, I mean, I think that, isn't that something that George confirmed or something or whatever? Partially. Partially, okay. Potentially. It's a little too close to yes. Very true. All right. So who wants to give us a synopsis of John You're not, 7? We're not going to let her do it. Right, because we have a time constraint. Yes. Yeah. So you're doing it. Oh, I do. You're just taking yourself out of the equation? <laughs> yes, I did the opening. I do the opening. I don't do the synopsis. <laughs> It's not written anywhere that you knew rules, yeah, just I so know. you know. I can, I can point to multiple chapters where I've done the introduction and the synopsis. Yeah, well, this is your show. Oh, I see. Oh. So we're not doing dem- Democratic vote anymore, I just decide? Oh, no. Fuck, it's a Democratic vote. Well, then it's not just my show. I mean, <laughs> I'm shrugging, guys. I was saying, it's not, it's not against union rules for you to do both. It's, that's just up to you. I think he does the synopsis the fastest, though. I think he does it faster and better. All right. I will do the synopsis. Thank you. For John, chapter for John. seven. You also like John. I do like John. King of the North. The not one, yet. The one true Stark. Not yet. Well, he's the one true Stark. He's not King of the North yet. Synopsis. 
So John and Sam and Lord Commander Mormont and a whole bunch of Night's Watchmen are up north of the wall now investigating the hand that Ghost had brought back at the end of the last John chapter. And they have discovered two bodies of Benjamin Stark's men lying in the woods. And so they're checking those out, seeing what's going on. Uh, one of the guys, the, uh, the second ranger, who's now the acting first ranger, thinks that they were, they've been freshly killed uh, right where they are. But Sam's like, uh, no, you're a fucking moron. They really weren't killed right now. Look, uh, there's like no blood coming out when Ghost ripped the arm off. So obviously they were killed a long time ago and probably just left here for us to find, which is the case, as we'll find out later on. So they they do all that. Lord Commander Mormont says, well, he wants to bring the bodies back instead of burning them so that Maester Eamon can check them out. So they, they bring those back beyond the wall. So the blind guy can check them out? Well, I'm sure that he'll have his stewards help out. Okay. All right. But Just yes, not Chet, because Chet's with the dogs he now. Want, he wants Maester Eamon to check them out. Okay. So maybe he can maybe he can tell by touch. Maybe there's Braille all over the organs. Never know. Whatever. Who knows? Maybe there's a smell that he is a blind guy can smell. Who knows? Maybe he's magic because he's a Targaryen. <gasps> Continue. Spoiler alert. He- <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> So, uh, Lord Commander Mormont also wants the rangers to search every inch of the haunted forest, leave no stone unturned. Within ten leagues? Within ten leagues of the wall. And uh, if there's not enough men to do it, then they should take some of the stewards and have them assist. So John will be happy he might get to go search. Oh, no, they want the the guys that... Well, the hunter, the people who do the hunting and the the wood collecting. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't a league, like, 20 miles... I don't know. League is like Major League Baseball. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't think so. It is. I knew I knew this at one point because they mentioned leagues at some other point. But anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a distance. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And so they they all head back beyond, behind uh, down underneath the wall. And there's some news floating around the camp when they get back. Um, King Robert is dead. Somebody's getting a lot of side eye from everybody. What? Somebody there is getting a lot of side eye from everybody. At the camp. Oh, yeah. They're they're looking at John like, oh, oh boy, yeah, he's about to find out. Now no. at this point, all John knows is that the king is dead. Yeah. And oh, that's right. Because everyone knows before he even gets back there. Right. And oh. Lord Commander Mormont wants to see him. So John heads up to to see him and. uh Lord Commander says, have a seat. We have to do some talking. Got a letter here from from uh, King's Landing. Mm-hmm. Letter says that the king is dead, which John already just knew, and that Lord Eddard has been arrested for treason. And Lord Commander Mormont hopes that he can convince the young king to send him up to take the black. Because a man of Ned Stark's ability and position deserves the right to regain his honor by serving at the wall. So we'll see how that goes. Foreshadowing. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if that works out like that. Maybe not. It was supposed to. It was supposed to. But then something happened. A child got, had a fit and got his way. We'll see what happens. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's not. Maybe there's something else to it. Of course there is. They said maybe. You never know. It's never so simple with George. No, it's not. It's never so simple as a plain reading. John is not happy. He's upset. He uh, he goes and has some dinner. His boys come and his rally boys. around him. There's boys. <laughs> John and his boys. <laughs> John and his boys. And they're like, oh, we, we know Ned's not guilty of this shit. We don't know Ned, but we know he's not guilty of this shit. Not, absolutely not. And uh, then Alistair Thorne oh, comes in. Riles the boy up. Uh, just, not only a bastard... A traitor's bastard. I guarantee John you, gets pissed. Guarantee you that conversation wasn't happening until John walked in the room. Well, John was already in the room. 
I know, but the conversation that Alistair's having with the guys around him... Well, obviously it wasn't because they came into the room after John. Oh. John was already there. I, mis- I thought he was already at a table. I, no. I, mis- I misread that, apparently. He came in and sat down and then said that. And then, so John runs down the table after him and attacks him with his knives. But John's Dumbass. boys pull him off. John's arrested. Sent back to his tower. But at least he gets a ghost. She doesn't have to be completely alone. Aww. All this time, he's thinking about Ned, who his mom is, why Ned won't tell him about his mom, why Ned is embarrassed about his mom. And then John finally falls asleep and wakes up to ghosts scraping at the door, trying to get out. Having wolfy panic attacks. Yep. And it's... It got off a cold all of a sudden. Very cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll drop in the weather report. Very cold. Even though it's been warm for days. So John's like, well, something's wrong. Heads out into the hallway. Heads up to check on the Lord Commander. Finds a dead guy from earlier. Just kind of traipsing around. Ghost attacks. It uh, it gets the better of Ghost and has him in a chokehold. Fight ensues. John finally burns the fucker to death. And that's where we leave off. And Ghost lives. And Ghost lives, of course. Ghost can't die. He's not allowed. Well, even if he did die, he's a ghost, so he would just come back. Be right. Fine. Be repeating cycle. Right, so that's the end of the chapter. Yay, end of chapter! Because I know that I did this already once before. Um, A league is 3.5 miles, give right. or take. So that's 50 miles. Give or take. Yeah. Like 40. Like, yeah, 40, 45, maybe somewhere. It's a lot of miles. Upwards upwards of 50. It's a lot of miles that they're going to cover. Yes. Far too many. Far, far too many. Um, Poor fucking John. Hanging out. First time, second time, second time above the wall. So here's my other thing, too. Is that, all right, so I need you to tell me this timeline here, because when I was reading this, because I, even though I read the last John chapter... The end of the chapter, it's nightfall, right? Getting towards evening. Yeah, and they're taking their vows. They have to wait until night falls to take the Knight's Vows watch in front of the tree. Knight's and then, Vows, not Knight's Vows watch. Sure. You know, strike that, reverse it. Um, <laughs> so, but then Ghost comes out, and he's got the hand in mm-hmm. his mouth. Did they go back to the wall? Like, it doesn't say that they did, but did they go back to the wall and then come back oh, up the next obviously morning? obviously they had to, I'm because serious. they had to go get more people yeah, to investigate it like, properly. Like, wasn't with them. And they're not going to let them stay on the other side of the wall overnight, because they're not ranging. Okay. And they're, they're green guys. Okay. Them green boys, even though they're men in the Night's Watch. They still stink of summer. Yeah, yeah. they do. They're not okay. going to let them. Because that was my idea, is that it's like, it just goes from one to the next, and... We're led to assume that they had to potentially go back to the And then it goes that they're, it's coming toward midday at this point. And I'm like, the, what? The last chapter, it was literally nightfall. There's almost always a time lapse between two it's chapters. It's usually not so short either. Yeah, what I figure is we're like the next morning, right? So they're heading mm-hmm. back at nightfall. Yeah, they're the not going to wait a week to go investigate. And then yeah. they set out first thing in the morning, mm-hmm. back to the grove, and then kind of back-traced ghosts' footsteps from there to find the bodies about midday. Okay. And they had to bring ghosts because the dogs didn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. No, they brought the dogs because the dogs were doing their job, but then they found out the dogs were useless already on the way. So, so the dogs are still there. Anywhere near those bodies. Yeah. Like, neither, are the neither are the horses. Yeah, the ho- yeah, the horses. They had to keep everything like far back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they brought the dogs, hoping the dogs would do their fucking job. And then I was like, no, 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 thanks. Yeah, nope. I'm too scared. No, you'll yeah, no pass on that. Until no. the one dog fucking lunges at the dude. It, he, like, it, fuck it off, chat. Smell bad. No, no touch. It doesn't smell like anything. Well, not to humans anyway. It doesn't smell like anything. Yeah. So we got some mysterious dead bodies. Mm-hmm. We know who they are. They're they're two of Benjamin Stark's men who went missing six months ago. Yes. The bodies are, they look fresh. They're not mm-hmm. decomposed or anything that would indicate that they've been dead for a long time, so. Except their well, black hands. Except the black hands. Which would, be, I think that'd be more like if they got frostbite before they died kind of thing. Except it's only the hands. There's nothing on the ears. 
Nothing on the face. It's just the hands. You can get frostbite on just your hands if you have your fucking head bundled up the right way. I mean, they don't. It doesn't say that they have anything but love. This mean it didn't come off. You don't get frostbite after you die. You just freeze after you die. So the blackness could be frostbite. I, then, I, w- I will agree with you to a point, only because I know for a fact they don't wear ski masks, and their noses, they don't cover their noses in the snow, and their true. noses they, they, are they, not they have frostbite. In their nose. Okay. I see your point. Boom. Thank I see you. your point. Um, I will say, though, that there is slight evidence that they have been decomposing for a while, even though they're not decomposing, because you can pick up a freshly dead body, like, you can pick the head up by the hair, the hair doesn't just rip out in two the seconds. The reason it did that was because the guy died from a blow to the neck. That doesn't matter. If you have... How many movies and how many like things have you seen where they pick up a dead head by the hair that's just been decapitated? A freshly dead head, the hair does not fall out. If they're not fresh... They died a long time ago. But... No. You're arguing with me that they've been dead a long time when I'm saying that they've been dead a long time. Okay. So We're arguing that they're stupid and they don't know that. The guy is like, well, they haven't been dead very long, and then goes and picks up the head, and the hair just rips right out of the scalp. That won't happen on a freshly dead I, body. I agree with you there. Yes. And then the same thing where, like, as soon as that happens, he, like, pushes the face away, and then the skin just peels off. The skin's not going to peel off if it hasn't been dead for a while. I I agree with you So, there. which is where... We obviously know they've been dead a while. Yeah. And that's not just from our medical knowledge. Well, I mean... Yeah, because I know without any medical knowledge, so there. you got... He's also read all the books. Yeah. You don't count. He has no medical knowledge except what I tell him. And even then, he doesn't retain it. Or what I learned on ER and House. And Grey's Anatomy. And Grey's. I do love the fact that... Samwell knew more about it than everybody else did, and mm-hmm. these people have been hunting, and Sam has never gone hunting. So oh, Sam went hunting. Sam went hunting. That's why I said he knows his dad. He watched his dad. Yeah, well, his da- he made his dad. His or- dad would make him watch him skin the deer and everything. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, the guys. You would think these guys would know these the same guys, thing. Yeah, these guys <laughs> did it for sport. These guys did it for fun. Mm-hmm. Sam didn't, and these guys should have known that. I mean, especially with the arm missing, there was no blood. Oh, also, did Ghost not eat part of these guys? Did he just bring a hand back? He just, he just brought, brought the hand back. Okay. And making sure there's no there's no blood on the snow. There's mm-hmm. no. It doesn't look like this was the murder scene. Listen, but this ranger dude says that they died right here, right now, like two hours well, ago. Well, he's he's an arrogant son of a bitch who clearly <laughs> has no idea what the fuck he's talking about and should not be a ranger. Jerry Riker, she's talking about you, motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it, number one. Number two. So. I'm not understanding that reference. And clearly neither is she. Yeah. That's a Star Trek The Next Generation reference where Commander Riker oh. is number one. Oh, okay. The oh. executive officer of the ship. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. I was thinking number two from um, Awesome Powers. Whatever. So, Sam is cowardly, like, looking underneath the horses with the dick, like, smacking him in the face because he won't go near the body. Yeah, pretty much. But he's like, but look and, and see and stuff with the... With the thing in the place and the blood and there isn't and it's not running and, and Mormon's just like, take a look. Mormon's like, get the fuck over here, you piece of shit. I can't hear you on the other side of them horses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Mormont doesn't believe that they're freshly killed anyway because he's like, if Benjamin Stark, if Benjamin Stark had run into some wobblings anywhere near this close to the wall, he'd have tracked those fuckers down and brought me their heads. Well, yeah. and, uh, he also <laughs> does make a good point by saying Othor still has his horn. And if they were that close to the wall and they were being ambushed, he'd have blown that fucker. Yep. Mm -hmm. Blown that shit and got some attention. Yeah. There's no way he wouldn't have used it. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. So they clearly did not die there. They were placed there for them to be found. Because. I I just like how it takes a group of people in this to do a medical examination. (laughs) Post mortem. Well. These guys have gone looking for Benjen and his men. Multiple times over the last six months. Mm -hmm. Why would they not think to look in the Weirwoods, which is Benjen's gods? Well, this isn't in the Weirwoods. This is away from that. Remember, because Ghost brought the hand back to the Weirwoods. Right, but it was in the same area. I mean, it could have been a couple leagues off for all I know. 
But if nice they're these leagues. <laughs> <laughs> but if they were looking for Benton and his men, would they not check the woods closest to the wall? Well, I mean, you have a fair point, though, because if he was on his way back and he made it just that close to the wall before just dying on, like, succumbing to his wounds, they should have checked that close to the wall just to fucking make sure. Well, right. I'm saying if they had checked it and there was nobody there before, mm-hmm. then, they, also, then they wouldn't be having this argument. So that also makes me wonder how long have these guys been dead? Because they've been missing six months. Yeah, they've been missing for six months. Um, they have, obviously were not there within the first couple months that they were, like, tracking these things, so they could have either been alive or dead, far away, we don't know. But, like, are the others, like, fucking vampires? Daylight comes out, and they, like, collapse wherever the hell they are because they can't handle being awake during the day. Well, they don't like sunlight. They don't like sunlight. According to old man's story. Really? Didn't you read the story? I did. But I forgot that they, that they didn't like sunlight like that. <gasps> They're devil's snare. <laughs> But, so, but I'm wondering, like, are these two, were they, were they taken by the others and then dropped off there? They probably walked themselves there and then dropped themselves. Because if you remember back to the prologue, they were all dead bodies in a camp. Yeah. And then when they walked away, the bodies came back to life Mm -hmm. and killed the humans. Yeah. And that's, and see, and that's where, like, I'm trying to find out if they just, like, pass. Yes! That's how it happened? Isn't that how it happened in the prologue? No. I the said the wild, bodies got The wildlings away. were slaughtered, but then the bodies were all gone. It was the others themselves that killed Sir Waymar. Oh, okay. And then he turned into a white after he died, and then he killed Garrod. Okay. And that was pretty instantaneous. Like him being killed by the other oh, and yeah, then coming back and minutes. yeah, like that was that was so they could have been whites for months. Yeah, and that's and that's why. But like, that's they what probably did out. walk themselves there and yeah, and then daylight comes over and they turn into vampires. And just kind of like pass. They out go on the back spot. to their ice cube or stasis. Or maybe they laid there specifically on purpose to be found so they could be brought back below the wall <sighs> and attack Lord Commander Mormont. You're giving zombies way too much thought credit. I'm not saying that they're the they're ones thinking. I'm saying that oh. they're the ones following are- the orders from the others. Oh, that's fair. It probably is some kind and of mind control. Does wait? Does 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 or George just- R. R. Martin have anything to do with Dungeons and Dragons? Does he like have any kind of care of like that kind of lore? Do you know? I'm sure, he it's fantasy, so I'm sure he's like down with it or whatever. Okay, because necromancers that's in the what game. I was thinking. Yeah, necromancers in the game. Because I was reading. Because one of my characters is a necromancer. They, if you have something that you've brought back to life, if it goes without a certain range of your power, it just follows the last command that you gave it without, like, like, you can't be like, no, like, don't do that, like, change your, like, you know, do this instead. Like, as soon as it's out of that range, like, it just goes through with that last command. So if you basically told it to just walk to the wall and then fall over, that's what it's going to do. And you're, there's nothing that's going to stop it from doing that yeah. unless it, it gets murdered. And or then, unless you get closer to it to make it change its mind. And then tell it to, once, yeah. it's, once it's below the wall, to wake up and go kill Lord Commander. Yeah. So there's probably necromancy involved. Shit, girl. Mm-hmm. Fucking, the main other dude's a necromancer. Sweet. That's deep. All right, so... So now we know what the others are doing. <laughs> <laughs> They're necromancing. Necromancer over there. <laughs> All right, so they uh, they decide to take the bodies back below the wall. I know, think they, they should have just think left they them there. Them. Like, everybody thinks you burn them, except for Lord Commander Mormon. He's like, no, I want Maester Eamon, the blind guy, to take a look at him. Just take some fucking pictures. <laughs> take him back to the blind guy. Sure. The, the Maester Bloom up there, draw some frozen dicks. No. Frozen dick pics. <laughs> just one episode, so, so please. So he gets back to Catelyn, wherever the hell Catelyn happens to be at the time, and be like, here, get this to Catelyn. It's a frozen dick pic. She's going to love it. <laughs> You were the one complaining <laughs> about the time constraint. Yeah, we'll make the time constraint. You um, should be okay. And so they take the bodies back below. Now I have a question. What? Because supposedly the others and their monsters cannot cross the wall because it's magical. Right. But it has magical barriers. They didn't... So how did they get... 
how were they able to go through? I think it's because they didn't do it. Like, I, all right, so I feel like it's like a, like a vampire type deal. They didn't try to walk through the wall on their own or go by the wall on their own. Someone brought them. They were on, they, they of no force of their own were put onto the little gurney type shit. Is this like in comparison to vampires have to be invited into yes. your home yes. for them to be able to enter? That's my idea. Okay. Is that, that because they were brought across, invited, they brought yeah. across the wall by those guys because they didn't know any better that they were, the, those two others were invited over to the other side. So the magic that's there didn't so prevent we, them. So we didn't let the right ones in. No, Apparently. they let the white ones in. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Come on, that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh my god, that could be a chapter title. They let the white ones in. <laughs> Can you write that down? Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, be proud boy. of me, Maester. <laughs> oh boy, that was very punny. <laughs> I don't think you can handle the amount of punitude you just block him in the face with. <laughs> That was a dick slap with a punitude. And not even just like a normal dick. Like, that was like a serious punishment. That was a porn hub kind of dick. (laughs) Whack. (laughs) I think I'm laughing more now at your reaction. (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually comment. Alright, so they head on back below the wall. Mm hmm. Which even the calmest, most docile horse could not manage to take the whites back with them for no, them. Yeah, they had to carry well, them. Themselves. The animals wanted yeah. absolutely nothing to do with them. Nada. Nothing. Mm-hmm. There's bad juju. Don't which whip. which I would think if you have an animal that's like like any and it's not just like one even at this point like it's every single one of them if. You know that these animals have had dead bodies on them before. Yeah. That they've been around. No problem. Yeah, that they've been, like, you know, they've been through the ringer. They've seen some shit. They've been attacked yeah. by, like, fucking shadow cats and, and snow uh, bears. Wildlings and, wildlings and stuff. And these horses are, like, fucking battle horses at this point where they're like, eh, fucking spearing out their enemy. It's a head it missed. And, or it hit, but I, I'm badass. Yeah, exactly. And, like, but then this happens. You've got two dead bodies yeah. and everything is freaking the fuck out. Like I'm except sorry, if my goat, except, if, goat. except ghost. If my dog doesn't like you, I don't like you. It should be the same mentality at the wall. I've got the same concept with Wiley now because Izzy's just fucked up. So, <laughs> but <laughs> Izzy's just a fat old broad. <laughs> she's she's a fat old broad that hates everybody. <laughs> but as soon as Wiley, the friendliest dog I know, doesn't like somebody, you're out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's fair. I don't yeah. get why they don't. Why they don't take the animals' reactions into consideration? They're just they frustrated. They're just frustrated that the animals yeah. aren't doing their job. But, but like this animal's done its job for how many years without a problem? And now, and just this one time, and, and every single animal's got a problem with it. Yeah, and everything just seems that much colder around these things too. Yeah, like it's warm. The wall is weeping. Has been weeping. For Has days. been. We- that was that was the other thing I said earlier. It, the wall's been weeping for days. Mm-hmm. These bodies should not be frozen stiff. Yeah, pretty much. They should, they should have should, ice. They should be decomposing. Mm-hmm. They should be gooey, gooey, disgusting. Bloating a little bit in the middle. fucking solid. Yeah. There is no liquid in these bodies. It's just all fucking ice. It should not be. Nope. So. Not this warm day. Even these, if you're in the shade. These guys obviously never watched CSI. They really need to get their shit together. <laughs> and like CSI New York, not Miami. Miami was terrible. Right. LA's height. There was more than one. <laughs> yeah, there was three. Las Vegas too, wasn't there? Las Vegas. That's the original one. So, okay, so see, I am at Las Vegas. New York's the all right no, one. It wasn't Miami shit. Las Vegas. It was just called CSI, just CSI at that point. Yeah, because it was the original. And then they had the spinoffs. Fucking Caruso. New York. That's the one that had um, Lieutenant Dan in it. Yes. Mm hmm. Okay. Alright, so they get the bodies back inside. 
They throw them in a meat locker. And there's some news. Do they throw them in a meat locker or just put them in some storage closet? Or? There's like a cell in the wall. Okay. Like a cell well, ice, wall. It's an ice cell in the wall. Oh, uh, that, so basi- that, yeah. So basically a meat locker. They're, it's where you, you know, put like, frozen right, beef and they're stuff. They're right at home, you know, they're yeah. in Prisoners. the wall. Prisoners. Prisoner dead bodies. Yeah, because dead bodies need to be held prisoner. I, no, I, no, no, prisoners. I still think, oh, though, that the, the, the prison oh. cells should not be so close to the uh, commander's tower. I don't think they are. I mean, we're, we're they only, like the, the whites castle. only, the castle's not huge, or, so. The whites only killed one person on the way up to the commander's room. That we know of, because it's the only one that John saw. True. Um, so I didn't go outside. That is true. But what if they have the dungeon where you would keep the prisoners at the base of the tower of where the commander is? Because That's fucking then you only, stupid. No, because then you only have to have one garrison of people protecting both. Like, you don't have to have, like, ten troops protecting the prison and then ten troops protecting the Lord Commander on opposite sides of the thing. You've got, like, fifteen people instead protecting one place, so you don't have to worry about splitting your, your group up. Maybe that's kind of smart. Plus, they probably weren't guarding them like prisoners because they're dead bodies. That too. Yeah, but I would I think that, that I would think there. that if the bodies were kept somewhere not in the tower, mm-hmm. somebody would stumble across a dead body that the whites killed and set off some kind of alarm. I don't know. Maybe they're as dumb as like the Metal Gear Solid guards. Oh God! Huh? Oh, is it? It's all they do. Exclamation point, and question mark, and done. disappear. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> Very easy to fool. Okay. Yeah. You could literally put a cardboard box on. You could alert a guard, put a cardboard box over your head, and they'd be like, oh, it's a box, and walk away. Yeah, like sneak into the middle of the room and then just like sit there under a cardboard box, and they'd be like, did you put that? They'd be like, oh, where'd that box get there? Eh, whatever, not my job. Just All right. Away. <laughs> And then you'll move the box, and then they come back around the corner, and they're like, is that box in a different spot? Uh, like a box yeah, or whatever. Who cares? Yeah, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure, whatever. Yeah, it's <laughs> no, it's Good solid. stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> that game. Okay, oh, my goodness. so there's news floating around the castle. Yeah, John yeah. comes through the wall, and everyone's giving him the side eye. So what's the news? Oh, the king is dead. Oh, that's yes. the that's the big news. Ding dong, the king is dead. Well, that's I was going to say news. that. I didn't want you to roll your eyes at me. <laughs> he only rolls his eyes if he doesn't say it. Otherwise, it's just the the pug from Pocahontas. Ugh. Yeah. Fetch <laughs> <Look at> boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah I know. I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> The pug, Poca- that's, the, that's the picture I sent you. Oh, okay. oh the gif I sent you. That's a pug, oh, okay. that's the pug from Pocahontas. That's who that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. He, okay. he rolls his eyes at everything in that movie. <laughs> yes, he does. Mm, smart dog. Yeah. Including his best friend, the raccoon. I, sometimes I think we're the pug and raccoon. <laughs> we're the raccoon and the hummingbird. You're the hummingbird because you try to keep us on track. I'm the raccoon causing all sorts of fucking mayhem. And you're trying to keep me under control, and he's the pug sitting there rolling his fucking eyes at both of us. God, yes! <laughs> I fucking love it! Oh boy. We have now come together. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and that's oh. perfect, because our tree is the Ironwood tree, and it's Grandmother Willow. <laughs> oh, maybe that'll be one of our one of our shirts. It'll be our Ironwood logo. And then we'll just have the three of us there. It'll be the pug rolling his eyes, you poking me in the head with your little hummingbird beak, and me just, like, waving you off. <laughs> yes! Your sister's drawing I'm that sorry, one. Sorry, I'm sorry. She totally encouraged that. Sorry. And the tree will have Grandmother Willow's face on it. <laughs> Get ready, Disney fans. It's coming. Okay. So, there's news, but it's more than John knows. Yeah, he's Everybody the else knows. At first. Yep. Everybody but John knows. Yeah. Well, I wonder if on. his friend didn't know, because his friend only told him about the king. I think he knew, but I think it was one of those things where he didn't, like... You don't want to be the one to tell John that. Yeah, he don't want to rub it in his oh. face. Like... So, it's, he goes up... Yeah, so... The Lord Commander calls him in. It's yep. like when someone dies, you don't want to bring it in and put it in their face. So everyone knows and everyone tells everybody, but you just don't bring it up to that person so you don't upset them. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Just, you know. We got there. 
We're past there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Let me turn the page. <laughs> so, the John has of the Lord Commander's Solar. The Solar. And... I like that word. Uh, Lord Commander offers him a seat. So, mm-hmm. uh, instantly, bad news. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And, and a wine. glass of wine. And wine. wine. And instantly that was a bad fucking news. drink, dude. He yeah. goes, I told you to sit. Mm-hmm. And drink. So, John sits and drinks. Yeah. And Lord Commander Mormont begins to tell him the bad news. Half of it he knows. The king is dead. Mm-hmm. The other half he doesn't know. Lord Stark, Eddard, has been arrested for treason. Which we already Well, knew. yes. Yeah, we knew that already, but... And then his heart breaks. And his mind starts to race. Mm-hmm. He starts freaking the fuck out, because he's like, what Well, the yeah. Shit? And then Mormont's like, do? It's alright, though. He's probably not going to die for, for this. We're going to save him. Yeah, he's going to come up here. You're going to have your old man with you. You guys are finally going to have that conversation about your mother. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh. I feel bad for John, though, because when he heard that the king was dead, that he was like, oh, my dad's going to come home. My sisters are going to come home. I can go visit them like Benjamin does. We can be a big old happy family again. I want to know how often Benjamin used to visit. A couple times a year, maybe. Christmas, yeah. birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. They're rather well informed at the wall. They are very because informed. Because John knows that Catelyn's been running amok, amok, amok all throughout the Riverlands. Don't I'm you so think Grand you. Master Pycelle <laughs> is sending, sending ravens? And dick pics. Yeah, I do. Grand Master Pice. Yeah. yeah. All the maesters are well versed in dick pics. So, like, is that like the Grand Maester sigil? Like, they should get their own little dick pic symbol. Oh my amazing. god, they should. The Citadel sigil is a dick pic. Yes, I mean it's supposed to be that steeple, <laughs> but we know what it is. Okay, I, like I really tower, so it's like an old. Oh. It's old. Okay, at this trillion. point, I really yeah. want to know if our listeners think we have gone too far because I think you guys have gone too far. I don't know. Let's have some comments mm-hmm. and some emails and stuff telling us if we have. It won't stop Widow. Probably not. I'm unstoppable. We've mm-hmm. noticed. One word for it. Yeah. Obnoxious is the other. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm aware. Synonymous. I agree. Mm-hmm. With her, anyway. So, yeah, with me. So John is confused and torn and... Angry. Yep, angry. Uh, doesn't understand. I mean, how could Ned possibly be traitor? And his thoughts get interrupted with, you know, if only Tyrion Lannister, blah, blah, blah. Too bad your mother decided to fuck that up. And he's like, listen, Catelyn Tully is not my fucking mother. Mm-hmm. He says Stark in the book because her name is technically Stark, I suppose. But he's like, Catelyn Tully is not my fucking mother. Well, and then he goes and t- don't do anything fucking stupid. You've already taken your vows. You can't leave now. Yeah. Yep. You're stuck here. Well, he tells him, he, I mean, he did say don't do anything stupid. He did he say don't do anything very, stupid. He also very explicitly just told him, just don't leave. Yeah. Don't do anything stupid. Don't leave. That wasn't don't do anything stupid. Don't leave, et cetera, et cetera. It was mostly just, you know. Don't be, do- don't be don't, doing don't, something stupid like leaving. Yeah. Don't do something stupid like trying to kill Sir Alistair across the table. Like, he didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> he warned him, though. I mean, he did warn him not to do anything he, stupid. He did. Teenage boys do really stupid shit when their ang- when their emotions are hot. Because true. teenage boys don't know how to handle emotions. It's because they're not taught how to handle emotions in any in any um, yeah any realm. Apparently, nope. They gotta be or, men. Yeah, absolutely. From the time so. they're born, they're men. They get born, and their parents are like, let's get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So, I think I've reached my quota for the day for Disney references. Please say, please mean day and not episode. I said day. I know. I, please mean it. Oh, okay. Um, so, John leaves. Yeah, John goes back down to dinner. Yeah, he's not happy. He tries to open all his friends are trying to console him. Yeah. Like, you know, his yep. girlfriend just left him and Oh, we what a did bitch. we did forget that John had, had the Winterfell dream again. Oh, we did. Yeah, John yeah, he woke his up crypt dream again. But it, it advanced more than yes, the tombs opened. 
and the king, kings were coming out. out of their tomb. They're like, listen, your father fucked up, dude. Yeah. You're going to have to get your shit together real fast. There is one other thing we forgot to talk about. The mm. color of Othor's and Janice's eyes. Oh, yeah. And that the guys were like, like, I might not be a learned person, but I'm pretty sure that motherfucker's eyes didn't change color after he died. <laughs> yeah. They were all, their eyes were ice blue. Ice blue. And but before they, like five times too. Yeah. Before they died, their eyes were brown. Yeah. I'm pretty sure both their eyes were brown. Mm-hmm. So they got icy blue eyes. We know what that yes. means. Bad stuff. Yeah, not they're white. Decomposing. Yes, they're not decomposing, and their eyes are icy, icy like, blue. And John even said he was looking at everybody. Back to the beginning. Um, everyone was looking at each other. Think everyone was thinking it. Nobody was talking about it because mm-hmm, no one mm-hmm. wants to believe that the whites are real. Right. Nobody but, wants to believe the others are real. I know, and John's they're all just there. children's stories. But John's like John's probably the youngest person there at the moment. And he's just like, hmm, those old stories Dan used to tell me are eerily similar to the shit I'm looking at right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he he's wondering if all the other, all the adults are thinking the same thing. But because they're children's stories, nobody wants to bring it up and sound like the ridiculous moron summer child. Right. Like uh, the first chapter or the first, the prologue where the one guy's like, listen, like there's some creepy shit out here. And he goes, are you a fucking child? Like, yeah. are you afraid of children's stories, you little bitch? Yeah. You should, cause you should be. You should be. You really should be. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm afraid of the Tooth Fairy. That was a horrifying oh, movie. I got a so. good story for you after <laughs> that this. That was time. actually. Yeah. I got a good story for you later. Okay. So. John heads down to eat some foods. Mm-hmm. His peeps are all like, it's all right, dude. Like, We got you. It's all good. We know your dad's not a traitorous piece of shit. He can totally come be awesome. He with might us be the dumb here. and unhonorable, but he's not a traitorous piece of shit. Even though he did technically commit treason. He did. He yeah, he did. By did. changing the king's by words. By changing the king's words. And then having him sign it. And and then refusing um, to accept that Joffrey was king. Well. It's still treason, even if it was well, accurate. it's treason because the king says it's treason. Right. Yeah. But, like, he legitimately, no questions asked, committed treason. Yeah. By changing the king's words without the king's knowledge. Yeah, but that's not it. why he gets arrested. He gets no, arrested but he did because... legitimately commit treason. I mean, he, got, yeah. he committed treason, but he got arrested for the wrong treason. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like when you go buy, like, a kilo of cocaine and leave it somewhere by accident and go pick up a hooker, you get arrested for the hooker. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't have sex with a hooker. Yet. Right. Yeah. I got it. I don't know. I just, I just like that analogy. I wanted to put that in there. Honey, okay. just because you need things mansplained doesn't mean I do. I didn't need it mansplained. I just wanted that analogy. I wanted to say it. Okay. All right. So they're eating their food. Uh, John gets a little extra food. Plus yeah. the good piece of bread. Plus the good piece of bread. Oh. The heel Here, of I the feel bread. sorry oh. for you. Eat more food. So John's like, oh, fuck. I hate the, Everybody I hate the butt. fucking knows. I know, but it's good for stew. It does make a good... Oh, he just got offered the wall version of Panera. Mm-hmm. He could, like, take out that, like, and yeah. that butt and then put that... Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. All right. I have a whole new respect for the butt. All right. There you go. I've always had respect for your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to say anything about it. <laughs> All right. So, and then Alice or Thorne shows up. Cocky motherfucker. Alistair. He he knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, of course he did. He want to rile that boy up. Yeah. Maybe he didn't actually have anything planned to say until after he opened the Oh, no. As soon as there. he heard what was going on, he goes, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. He's rubbing his hands together, and he's already started a fight because he knows he will not get in trouble. The kid will. I think the only thing that could have been better is if he had, like, kicked the door down with his foot and then just bust in singing a song about Ned being a traitorous bastard. That been Ding funny. Dong, the traitor's dead. The traitor's dead. The traitor's Ned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Doing that kind of shit. And you were like fucking just kick dancing up on the table doing it. Like grabbed a cane and a top Smash, hat out of nowhere. Swing the cane around. Yeah. Flipping top hats up onto his head. Like, ta-da! Sounds, sounds his cape into coattails. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh my god. But John's had enough because he's now, he, Alice Thorne calls him a traitor's Give me your bastard. Notebook. And the pen. She wrote down, the traitor's dead, the traitor's dead. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> He's not quite dead yet. Well, then maybe we might have to save it for another chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to name that one Nearly Headless Men. <laughs> No. He's not nearly headless. No, yeah, he's, he's headless. fully headless. Yeah. And then fully headless then. No, I like the I, I like do that like one. that one. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, so John uh, doesn't like being called a traitor's bastard. Nope. So he runs, stands up and runs down along the table. He goes like parkour on this. Yep. Yeah. You mean running like an idiot? Yeah. Well, no, like, I like jump over yeah, things in like, like the city. Idiot. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. know what parkour is. Right? Oh, like an idiot. Yeah. yeah. Then, yeah. Running around I, the jackass. Yep. Yeah. Jumping over things. I, I don't know. I think running on the table's a bit much. I, I like I him just. I like him just. <laughs> well, yeah, that too, but <laughs> I, th- I just like the idea of him just walking over there and punching him in the face. Oh, like I did him. in high school? He's going to yeah. plot yeah. knives. He's not going to just punch him. Yeah. I know. He's going for the kill. I know he is. He brought a dagger to a, a sword fight, so mm-hmm. he's... I know. I still think it would have d- gone a bit better for him if he just went over there and punched him in the face instead of trying to kill the guy. Yeah, if he didn't run at him, he probably would have gotten a lot farther. Because as soon as you run, people know your intent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, if he just walked over there, they could be like, oh, he's going to say some shit to that guy. Yeah. And then he didn't have to say anything. He'd just be Whoosh. He's going to go and Diego Montoya on him. Watch yep. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My name is Jon Snow. You insult my father. Prepare to die. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. Oh, poor John. So John goes after Sir Alistair with knives. Gonna have ourselves a fucking knife fight. Sweet. You notice that uh, none of Sir Alistair's men try and stop him. It's all John's men. Yeah, because I think Sir Alistair's men are like, oh, fuck. I mean, it kills Sir Alistair. We get like two birds, one stone here. Like, right. Snow's yeah. gone yeah, sure. and Alistair's gone. Like, yeah. not a bad plan. Yeah. yeah they're like, <laughs> so they're like rallying behind him for the fight. And as soon as the fight starts, they're like, oh! Yeah. I'm going to watch this shit. My thought process is, star. oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> Whoa. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh, wait. My thought, though, is what if, because cause John's a pretty charismatic person, what if Alistair's people like John, but they can't like John because then they fall out of like Alistair's good graces, and then they'd have to deal with his shit too? So what? Oh, if, so like, it's like the popular kids that actually do like the yeah, like how everyone kids, hates but Regina George, yeah. but yeah, but they can't hate Regina George. Yeah, so um, it's another Mean Girl reference. It's Mean Girl reference. But so, like, what if what if John kills Alistair, and then after he's dead? Oh, Alistair's buddies are like, dude, no, he totally had that coming, Mormont. Like, you don't get it. Like, he, he. But it fucking, doesn't happen, so. I know, but I can totally see his, his, his boys doing that. Because John's boys stop him. John's boys do stop him. And John's arrested. Poor John. Yeah. Sent back to his tower without dinner. He's oh, grounded. His double dinner. Yeah. He got double lunch. He's grounded. They took away his electronics and locked him in his room. Yeah. Took away his sword. He bad guys with swords. You could have said it. He, he did it on purpose. <laughs> but he but he gets a ghost. Yeah. He they don't want him to be too lonely. Yeah, so he's just chilling there in the tower. They himself. might have also done it just so that Alistair's, Alistair or Alistair's men don't try and kill him for retribution. Yeah. Because no one will go after John with a uh, ghost, ghost right there. Because they're not that stupid. Yeah. Or, or that desperate. Or there's also the thought that no one else could really control ghost except maybe Sam. So, so they didn't they, want they ghosts don't. going after Alistair. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't need an uncontrollable dire wolf just walking around camp doing yeah. whatever the fuck it wants. Yeah. So John finally falls asleep and is woken. I think he pouts himself to sleep. Thank you. Broods definitely broods himself to sleep. Yeah. Very Sansa ish of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't disagree though. She's not wrong. <laughs> He didn't cry, but he totally just like pouted and brooded himself. Like, you're the fucking bullshit. I don't fucking do that wrong. Motherfucker, it's me, my dad. And then I just fall asleep. So he wakes up and it's super cold. Super fucking cold. Yeah. Candle's been out a while. Ghost is scratching at the fucking door. It's abnormally cold for how warm it was earlier mm-hmm. that day. And I think John has noticed that. From being where the bodies were, and ever since then, everything's just getting colder. The whites just bring the cold with them. They are the cold. They no, they bring cold. the they bring the they cold. Bring with them. The cold. They bring the cold. Embodied. They bring the cold. That's literally the words to be in the book. Ominous over here. Mm. And you're fucking ruining it. Well, yeah, well you know, show me your ominousness up your ass. We've had. Uh, 
Maybe we've had... <laughs> we've had enough of your omnanominy. 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 I tried so hard not to do it, I couldn't, I said, I had to do it. Oh, God. I live in a monomony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't hurt yourself, kid. <laughs> You started it. Don't look at me like that. You started it. I know. (laughs) He just he just awkwardly pronounces the word. I turn it into a song. You turn it into a Disney reference. (laughs) And then blame me. You started it. Oh come on! When you start a tangent, it's our fault. (coughs) So anyway, John opens the door, finds the guard guarding him dead. He's Dead laying knees. on his stomach, but he's facing his, he's facing the guard. His neck is busted. Backwards. 180. Yep. Turn that shit around. 180 degrees. Bleh. I didn't think whites killed that way. Whites they will kill whatever they, they, kill they want. They need to. That's true. Yeah. Remember, not, I was trying, remember trying to choke ghosts to death, so. That's yeah. true. It's not, a, it's not really a zombie, so it's not like it's going to eat them. And it just... Yeah. It's it is a white... So, and here's my other question. That's is it white. like an infectious, like, I know it's magic. Is it like an infectious magic where now that he touched this guy and killed this guy, he, that, that, that other guard's now going to come no, back? No, because he wasn't stabbed with the crystal sword or the ice sword. These guys don't have any markings yeah. that we know of. Yeah, Thor right has sword. slashes and gashes oh. all through his abdomen. Okay, and then and the other one had the, the... Has his neck cut open. Yeah, I'm pretty sure only the other other the others can create the whites. whites. Okay. Yeah, Janice had the giant gash in his neck. Forgot about... Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they Luthor, been killed those ones. Dragon also had slashes. Okay, because I'm, I'm kind of getting it confused with the show where people just kind of died in the show, and if you didn't burn their bodies, even if they didn't die from that specific type of incense, they'd still... And this is where they bury. Yeah. They'd still rise up, man. Now, if they fall above the wall, no matter what, will they still come back as a white? We don't know. Oh, I need to know these things. We really don't know a whole lot about the others and their shit. Do the wildlings burn their dead? We don't know. Okay. You know. Do I? I mean, I might. Oh, I think you do. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out in, like, a uh, Storm of Swords or something. <laughs> that seemed oddly specific. <laughs> <laughs> well, because oh if it's a no, he'll say no. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll find that out, like, in two books. You're like, you know who you are? You're you're Chris Farley in the Wayne's World movie where he's guarding... The, the big executive, but he tells the random people the entire plan, and Wayne's just like, that security guard was oddly specific about this guy's <laughs> plans. Weird. <laughs> and then walks away. <laughs> okay, so, John goes <clears throat> full Metal Jacket style, or, uh, <clears throat> Metal Gear Solid style, sneaking up to the Lord Commander's chambers. He stole the sword off the dead guy. He stole the sword off the dead guy. You don't go uh, try and rescue someone or fight someone without a weapon. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Even a 15-year-old knows that. Crawl up the stairs, little headbands blowing in the fake breeze in the middle of the hallway. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Ghost is leading him on. Mm Mm-hmm. Got the sword ready, ready to go. He's in crouch mode. (laughs) Crouch mode. That's, that's how you stealth, you guys. You he, crouch. He's a noob. He's, he's got his noob tube out ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> he's, noob tube. he's got like, he's got really crappy armor and a really crappy sword, but he's like, I'm level 90, bitch. <laughs> and then he gets to the door. And it's open. Where Lord Commander's tower is, and it's open. Ooh. And so he goes, Leroy Jenkins! And runs in. Oh, it's the same excuse but okay. Oh, whatever. I don't know what that, whatever. I don't know what that is. It's like the same thing. Okay. Yeah. But he doesn't do that. Ghost does. Ghost does. Ghost runs in. I was going to say for Gondor, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> for freedom! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, Gondor never called for aid, okay? I beg you stand, men of the West. <laughs> yeah. Rock oh on. Goodness. All right, so was he it for Rohan, then? Not for, Ga- for 
Yeah, for Rohan. For it's Rohan. for Rohan. And Gondor had never, they're like, did they okay. ever answer our aid? They never fucking called for aid, you bitch! <laughs> Alright, just saying. Yeah, but then, but then Denethor's like, Rohan is abandoned to me. Yeah. Like, even though he never called for help. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's a fucking psychopath. Yeah. And then he dies. Kills himself. Yeah. Good. Good for yep. him. Fucking good. Good for the realm. Yes. Which me- makes me think that it was probably a good idea that Sean Bean died in that movie because he oh. probably was just as crazy as his dad. Littlefinger was involved. Oh, he's a mad king, huh? He is a mad king. Yeah, he literally is because Faramir's alive and he's trying to burn his son alive because he's so overcome with grief that Faramir. his son is... Faramir? Faramir. Faramir. Ben did. Well, yeah, Faramir. No, I called him Faramir. Yeah, she combined the two. I combined both of them together. I called him Faramir. <laughs> They're not... Yeah. Faramir is still alive, but he doesn't want to believe that he's alive because he's overcome with grief that his his true son, Boromir, is dead. So, might as well fucking burn this one, too. Well, yeah, because... My line has ended. Yeah. And then Gandalf knocks him out. <sighs> yes, that was a beautiful scene. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Not my tangent. That's a good tangent, though, because it's Lord, it, it's Lord oh, of the so Rings. Oh, so now it's acceptable. But it, 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 it has to be topic-specific. Lord of the no, Rings is acceptable. We're in fantasy books, so, so it's okay. We're still within the genre. We're not talking about fucking... He's never complained about your Dune references. Yeah, I do Dune tangents. Yeah. That's true. He only complains about my Disney ones. Mm-hmm. Because they're, they're, they're not topical. Yet. Yeah, and our, yeah, our Disney ones. But he has been letting us have bad guys with Schwartz. <laughs> It's because it's the shortest of the ones that we do. <laughs> yep, doesn't take very long. Nope. Okay, so he yells for Rohan and runs, yeah, runs in the, the door. door. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Winterfell! Whatever he yells. Snow! Snow! Oh my god. <laughs> for Ghost! <laughs> because he's got to go save his wolf right. now. <laughs> Yep. And the room's pitch black. Pitch black. But there's a shadow moving in the shadows. Yeah, I don't get that. So there's a sh- it's pitch black. I think it's pitch black, but because there's a smidgen of light so coming in. So it's not pitch black then. It's not, well, it's not pitch black, but it's it's there's light behind it's, him. There's, there's just there's, enough coming through that he can see an outline. Right, so there's pitch black or there's not pitch black. Yeah. Either it's pitch black and you literally cannot yeah, see nothing, anything. Yeah, there's no light coming into your eye. Or it's not. Yeah, it's so, not pitch black. It's not pitch black. Well, no. the curtains were closed. He's. Ex- I think it's. It mentions that he's pitch black because he goes from a place where there's some form of light into a room where his eyes haven't adjusted yet. So to him, okay. it's pitch oh, black. We don't. We don't know for sure the hallways were lit. They didn't say the hallways were lit. I mean, they didn't. But he's still going. Like he could see in the hallway. Like he could see that the guard was dead. He could right. like see from across the way that the guard was dead. There's a torch. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so he went from like a place of mediocre light. And followed out, so yeah. like his eyes kind of adjusted, okay. but there was still light in the hallway from probably like that torch or a torch further down. Mm-hmm. And then goes into a room where nothing's lit, so he goes from being in a place where he's got light going into his so, eyes to nothing. I do think the room was pitch black because I'm pretty sure they have blackout curtains. Because I mean, there, was, yeah. there was no light until he pulled the curtains down, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So basically, they'd be in a, <laughs> yeah. in a dark room. The only thing you could see is the open doorway. Where there's light outside there, right. but it's not going to come in. Yeah, but if it's pitch black, how do you see a shadow moving? That's what I'm wondering. How you see anything in the pitch black? He hears it with his ears. Literally this, pitch this black. This is going to sound silly, maybe. Tell that to Riddick. This is going to sound silly, maybe, but I know wolves can see things move in the dark. He Well, well he would be. All right, so science. It's a tapetum. The tapetum is the thing that reflects light inside the eye and allows the cone to pick up more light so they can see in the dark. We don't give a shit about science right now. We're talking about magic. The light from the hallway that's coming up from that torch is enough for any animal to have enough light come into their eye to be able to see what's happening in there. We're talking... Right. She's saying since ghosts can see in the dark and John and ghosts have a very specific connection... Oh. ...that does John maybe possibly have the ability not to see in the dark because of his magical connection to ghosts? No. No. How do you know? Because he's not... He's got a good connection with ghosts, but it's not a completely conscious thing still. So I It doesn't think that- have to be conscious. Wolf, or wolf, ghost could be showing him what he sees. Maybe he's seeing through ghost eyes. I'm going to call small shenanigans because there's a possibility, but... Because, for instance, in the pitch black, where you can't see anything, mm-hmm. he knows that the thing has its arm, his hands wrapped around ghost's throat. But did he, was he, did his eyes adjust to that, or? Your eyes cannot adjust to pitch black. But it's not pitch black. It said it was pitch black. 
in the book, it's did it not? I think it was just the exaggeration of the fact that he went from a place that had some light that he could see into a place where he George went doesn't more darkness. exaggerate. Yes, he does. And Tyrion says he has a giant stick. Tyrion exaggerates. <laughs> George exaggerates, too. Okay, hold on. He heard a shriek of Mormont's raven. Blah, blah, blah. John came scrambling after the door to Mormont's solar was wide open. The die roll plunged through. John stopped in the doorway, blade in hand, giving his eyes a moment to adjust. Heavy drapes had been pulled across the windows, and the darkness was black as ink. So he, say that it's pitch then black. he saw it, a shadow in the shadows, sliding mm. toward the inner door. A man shape all in black. Yeah, so it's not pitch black, so he does have just right, enough light like, black, which, yeah, which is blacker than pitch. I don't think there's anything darker I, than pitch black. Ink, ink pitch black is the black. absence of all white. No, pitch black is referring to pitch. Like tar. Pitch. I know. Ink is just as black, if not more black, than pitch. The description to me does not lead me to think that there is... That's okay, you can disagree with any us. Com- yeah, any complete amount of white that would say that he can't see something. But anyway, yeah. it's also another time that the others and or their people are co- are called shadows. Oh, that's this, Yeah, this is like, what, the third time? At least now? Mm-hmm. Shadows. Yeah, there's your theory on that. Well, my theory has nothing to do with that. Okay. I remember us having a conversation about, about that. About Shadow? Yeah. Now, George had said, when asked if Holland Reed knew who John's mother was, he said only the Shadow knows. Yeah. And that that Shadow is probably a Shardane. But... She did? It's pitch black. Mm-hmm. I do have... She's alive. It's pitch black. Or it's... Ink black. black. It's ink, ink black. Ink black. Black as ink. But he can still see his blue eyes. All I can think of is a gold... Yeah. That's gold eyes. A gold? Well, no, their eyes light up. Yeah. But that was my first thought. But if it's pitch black, yeah, why do go- you if see... If the gold are involved in this shit... Then they're all fucked. They're, 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 they're in serious fucked. fucking trouble. We're all fucked. the nearest gate and get the fuck out <laughs> of there. There's no pyramids around. They have nowhere to land. They don't all use pyramids. No, they don't. I mean, they don't just all have these pyramids. The like, there's like the Asian one. We don't know. Well, we, we don't know. pagodas. Yeah. Shit. Well, and a lot of them also just hover the, above the planet and use the rings to transport the ones who them are down. Greek, Greek gods. But they Jesus. weren't all just Egyptian gods. I know. I was just thinking, like, most of them use pyramids to land, though. Well, the... They're space the Whatever structure... Yeah, whatever structure is the main structure. The big ships. The yeah. mother pyramid ship. ships. Yeah. Fucking gold. All right, so a fight ensues. Yep. Between John, Ghost, and the thing with the blue eyes. Yep. Othor, right? Othor. Othor. Yep. Dead Othor. Yep. Dead. He Othor. recognizes him in the, in the pink's black. Yeah. He's seeing a lot of things for it being as black as ink, yeah. which is why it's an exaggeration, and that he can actually see just fine. I'm going to disagree with you. You can. I'm just saying that the literary evidence says that it's not dark enough that he can't physically see. Whether he's using Ghost's eyes or not, he can still see. Well, Ghost can probably see in the dark. Ghost so, can, yeah. Ghost, ghost is magical. Yeah, and Ghost can just see in the dark because he's a wolf. Right, so maybe right, John is just seeing through Ghost. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Either regardless oh, if wait, he's using his eyes or not. With us? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying he can still see. It's not pitch black. He can see. It's an exaggeration. I don't think. I'm not. It's an going exaggeration. Over this again. <laughs> I think it's magic. He thinks it's magic. You think it's an exaggeration. That's okay. Let's move forward. All right. What happens? Continue. Tell us the next step. The wolf jumps at Othor, and they're wrestling. And Othor grabs um, Ghost by the neck and is choking him, choking the life right out of him. Oh, no one That's deserves. Happy. No one deserves that. No puppy so, deserves that. So in it. comes John. And he still doesn't make a fucking sound. Well, Ghost well, never okay. makes a sound. So, Ever. if you're being choked and your airway's being crushed, you can't make a sound. Right, but I'm saying, you're he's, he, Ghost doesn't growl. You can't make a physical sound. I know, I know, he's not growling, but he didn't make a sound. In his attack, thing. he didn't make a sound. When he got hit, he didn't make a sound. Okay. So, boom. Just saying. 
The dog can't make that sound, though. I'm sure it can make something along those lines. It make the snapping of its teeth sound. There you go. Doesn't do that either, because ghost makes no sound. Ghost is a black hole. He knows wait. <laughs> His nose is a black hole. So is he more of a shadow? He's a ghost. Can't they be the same thing? I think ghost is a physical embodiment of one of the old gods. Yeah. Something along those lines. I would say, I was just thinking ghost is the Vashta Narada. <laughs> no. No, that's the weird trees. John felt as blind as Master Eamon. Doesn't make any sense. Hmm? John felt as blind as Master Eamon. Master Eamon can see. He just can't see well. No, Master no, Eamon is Master blind. Eamon is fucking blind. blind. Like 100% or 100% blind. 100% fucking blind. Okay. Also, <laughs> feeling as though you're blind does not mean you're blind. Uh, all right. So who wins the fight and how? John wins. How? He burns the fucker to death. He burns the pulls fucker the, to death. He pulls the curtains down, lights them on fire, Mormont standing butt-ass naked in the doorway. So when did, where did the His fire come from? Mormont was, was, the holding, uh, was holding the can- uh, a lantern-ish yeah, lantern thing. Commotion. He heard the commotion and he was coming out to see what was going on. So John, he wasn't in, was he in Mormont's room or close to Mormont's room? He was room? in Mormont's his, solar. he was at, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Mormont was coming out of his room, he was standing in his doorway, butt-ass naked, John grabs the lantern, um, throws it on the pull-down curtains, and then throws them onto Othar, and we actually don't know if John won. Chapter oh. ends. Chapter ends. John Just please let it burn. He's yes. praying that what he just did is going to work. Right. Yes, so we don't actually know. I mean, we know, but... So Mormont's saying they're confused as fuck, just dick hanging hanging in the wind. Literally got caught with his dick out. Yeah, literally (laughs) caught with his dick out. And shrinking in the cold. Oh. No, he's a a bear from the north. I think he's okay. Yeah, he he likes the cold. He's one of those fucking polar bear divers. Oh, so it's hibernating. Probably not even hibernating. No, he's one of those crazy fuckers that does polar bear dives. I swear. Oh, probably. Yeah. He's like, oh, look, hey, some frigid water. Well, how, Let's go cannibal. How else have the men in the north, uh, men at the wall, gonna, gonna shower or bathe? They don't. Remember Yorin? It's full of lice and shit. Yeah, they don't bring that bathe. Well, I'm sure some of them might. John might. He John might find does. some, like, heated some, like, heat some water somewhere. He at least does the important parts, which are testicles, pits, and, or testicles, it, pits, and hair. We call it PTA pits, tits, and ass. There you go. That's what he's doing. Yep. And so... With a warm washcloth. <laughs> fade to black, because apparently it wasn't already black. Yeah. <laughs> fade to black or black. <laughs> Listen, all the, all, black the goth, it wasn't already black. <laughs> all the goth kids know that there are different shades of black. <laughs> yeah, faded, washed, and never worn. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. My black doesn't match my black. If that right. happened. So that's the end of our chapter, our John yeah. chapter. We did kind of skip over John's dream, which I think, I mean, Should we, go back to we that? talked about it, but mm-hmm. I think it's important. Okay. It is incredibly, it is really important because yeah. it's also a well, continuation of his we last really one. really wanted to get to the fate scene. Yeah. So John has the Winterfell dream. It goes further. Why are the, so the, the kings of winter are coming out of their cells. Because there's no more lords in the north. Now, are they Rob's there. happy to see John? Are they going to try to kill John? What do you think? What do we think is going on here? Well, John's terrified. He has no idea what they're going to do. But he's not scared of them. Remember the last in his last dream, he wasn't scared of them. It was something else. What was it? He didn't tell us. So, they're coming out of their tombs. The, go- the ghosts are walking out of their tombs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Apparently there's a ghost chasing <laughs> Septim Meow around. <laughs> Apparently. Um. I say, and the, the kings don't speak to Ned. No, they don't speak to anybody. Well, no, I mean, like, but, like, how the kings are coming out of their graves at this point, and, like, I don't know, in a way, confronting him, like, it's only the statues that Ned sees anything happen with. Well, that we're aware of. In, the, in John's last dream, it was one of the statues that he saw, too. Yeah. This dream goes further. So, Doesn't last night, he had dreamt the Winterfell dream again. He was wandering the empty castle, searching for his father, descending into the crypts. Only this time, the dream had gone further than before. 
In the dark, he'd heard the scrape of stone on stone. When he turned, he saw the vaults were opening, one after another, as the dead kings came stumbling from their cold black graves. John had woken in pitch dark, his heart hammering. Well, that could be out of fear. Or just some kind of intensity. Yeah, could be anxiety, could be elation, adrenaline. could be... Probably that's what you're on. Well, more considering than likely, he considering he woke up in a really, really fucking cold room with his wolf freaking out. No, I wonder, is it just the dead kings, or is it also the dead lords? It's, did it, it say... Ju- it just says the kings. Well, then it was probably just the kings, considering there is a spot where the kings end and the lords begin. Very true. Mm-hmm. So it's probably just the kings. Interesting. And it only happens after the lords stop... After the after the Lord of Winterfell is no longer allowed to be Lord, technically, mm-hmm. Ned. He's the Lord of Winterfell. Mm-hmm. He's been taken. So that was my question. So, okay, so I think you're kind of getting where I want to go with this. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. To okay. Me. So <laughs> you're just more putting it the way I wanted to put it. Okay, so put it the way you wanted to put it. I'll it, tell you if that's the way I was trying yeah, to put so it. So what I was thinking is Ned has been taken, and so now. After the, after that happens in John's dreams, he is then approached by the former kings of the north. Yes. As almost like a, in my mind, like a coronation. I don't see it so much as a coronation, so much as a just don't fuck it up. They could be. But that's what, but, but that's, yeah. but that's what I mean is. Bad. <laughs> well, the, so. He's searching for Ned. Ned can't be found, as mm-hmm. in Ned is no longer around to be the Lord of Winterfell. So they're reaching so out to him. So now the kings are reaching out to the next true should-be person, King of the North, and they're reaching out to John. It would make sense to me. I mean, we, we don't, don't see Robert. Or well, we, we don't, don't see ever Rob. see Robert anything because we never, ever, ever get a Robert POV. We never mm-hmm. get a Rob POV. No, I meant Rob... Um, John's half brother. Yeah, we never. Rob never has any POVs. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Rob is not a POV character. That's right. His are through Usually Catelyn. Through Catelyn, correct. That makes sense. That's depressing as fuck. So we don't know if Rob has had a, dr- a dream similar. But and if he has, he hasn't mentioned that it. This is like the the ki- like the Kings of Winter attacking John or whatever. But and what if it's not? What if it's is not? Your thing? You're being that devil advocate dude right now. Yeah, what like, if it's not? What if they're... Haven't you realized that we on the Ironwood Network podcast go for the extreme? What if they're not? What if they're yeah. approaching John because he is the true heir? And they're welcoming him. I wouldn't go immediately to welcoming. Only, I mean, A, because we don't have any evidence... Or just but that. we don't have Either any way, evidence that they're attacking him thought. either. I don't mean welcoming him. I mean letting him know. Yeah. See, my thing would be they would want to test him first. Like they're that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, whatever. But they're but we don't know they're attacking him either. Yeah. And that's apparently the more common theory. Right. But, He's going to be attacked. But that still doesn't make sense. Why would they attack John? Yeah, I think that I think because that it, he's mentally going to the crypts where he's not allowed. I don't know. But I think that it's... But he is allowed. It's possible that it's them... It, it, this signifies the torch being passed from Ned to John. Whereas in the real world, it's being passed to Rob. Oh. And them King's of Winter give no shits about his Night's Vow watches. But King's give no shits about the Lords. Oh, and neither does Septa Meow, apparently. Yeah. So that's just that was what I wanted to go back and talk about the dream about was that. No, it's a good point. I don't know it's, as though I believe it's true, but I I think that's that's a definitely a worthwhile interpretation of that dream. I think so. So worthwhile. any interpretation, any interpretation can be a good interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> as long as Fair you're enough. not, as long as you're just not like pulling it out of your ass. Oh, and it's says not. the girl that says uh, pitch is an ink. But that's an interpretation. That's not what I said. Now you're just throwing words together and anyway, putting things in my mouth. <laughs> anyway, okay, so now that we're done with that, we need a name for the chapter. 
There, we have two written down. That's, one's yours and one's mine. We have four written down. Oh, we have four. Well, let's do you not read the other half of the page? Yes, I did. It was in front of your face. <laughs> yes, I did. And um, the one is a uh, band name, so no, I'm not going to vote for it. It's an amazing band name. I know, he likes the band. Or the group, or whatever it's called. Boys to Men. John and Sam go from being boys to men. That would have been last chapter. Yeah, yeah. but no, they're actually, like, you know, doing men things now. Mm-hmm. Nope. We did skip the one part yeah, where John was uh, not as happy when he um, mentioned, oh, look, I actually get to be a ranger for a day. Yay. Yeah, or it's if passing I, fancy. Had, I was so dumb, had I gone with Uncle Benjamin, it'd probably be me dead right now. Yeah, he grew yeah. up a little bit, yeah. yeah. That's why he, if that's what I'm saying, Boys to Men, he grew up in this chapter a lot. Yeah, I'm going to pass on Boys I'm to Men. I'm going to pass on okay. Boys to Men. What else we got? You said we have more than one, let's hear it. Oh. Um, and then there's the one that, that Wyvern came up with in the middle of the chapter. Okay. They let the white ones in. (laughs) They let the white ones in. Yep. And then the other one was the song that you did, um, The Traitor's Dead, The Traitor's Ned. Okay. And then I had the other one of Boy No More, because he's not a boy anymore. Mm. I like the whites. I do too. They let the white 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 ones in. in. I'm fine with what They let the white ones in. Yeah. It's a good one. I'm getting good at this game. You are. That's like <laughs> two out of three that were yours. Uh, that's... Two out of three in a row. Oh, yeah. That were your... Let me have a pin. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Pray, pray go with Drago. Pray go with Drago and... Pray go with... Pray go with Rago. Yeah. Drago. Draco. 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 <laughs> Draco. I'm tired. Draco alone. and Rago together, the same person. Oh, yeah. God. Drago. All right, so forevermore, this chapter will be known as They Let the White Ones In. Yay! As in W-I-G-H-T. <laughs> that's what I wrote. The, the White Ones. Yeah, that's what I wrote on here, too. All right. Um, let's see. Our next chapter is going to be... Aria. No. No, it is it? We're recording all out of order. Oh, that's right. But, so I think our it's next an editor. Chapter is it another editor? Be, nope, Brand 6. Brand 6. Oh, that's right. Yep, Brand oh, yes. 6. Okay. I'm all fucked up. Yeah, because yeah. they're making us wait for the next editor chapter, I think. Yeah, yeah we get a bunch of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's happening like in the way north back before here. We get to, mm-hmm. Before yeah. we get back we to editor. We because, have about another yeah. 80 some pages before we get to editor's final chapter. Yep. He makes us wait the bastard. Just stretch it out. Well, we did spend like a chunk there where we were back and every forth other to chapter another was a chapter, fucking, like yeah. every other chapter for like I know, but seven now, chapters, now so. we've got one, cha- one Ned chapter left and. We gotta wait seven well, because chapters. Because Ned chapter is the climax of the book. I know. Listen, I, I like a so good climax. So, ed- so George, yeah. is, George is edging us right now. That's what, yeah. <laughs> part, of, part of a good climax is a good rising action. <laughs> <laughs> so George is edging us with some Bran and some more Daenerys. Yeah, but I don't want kids involved. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you're going to be moral about it. I mean, this place is not a very moral place. I'm a uh, very moral person. All right. Uh, sure. I'm thank our patrons. Since you guys aren't going to stop talking, I'll just go ahead and push right on through. Just go right through it. Yeah, gonna, please do. I'm going to thank our patrons, our awesome patrons, who, um, if you guys remember, Katarina joined us on the previous episode mm-hmm. for Arya. Yeah. Which was awesome and fun, even though we hadn't recorded it yet. We're doing, doing, that, it. doing that right after this episode, actually. Yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you're, you're not saying, you're saying very vague things. They're not going to believe you. Yeah, no. We we make it work for you guys. Don't worry. Like, if you're going to join us, we make it work. Uh, let's see. If you'd like to become a patron, cool like our patrons, for a dollar a month, you can get uh, early access to the episodes. You can get the uncut raw dog versions, which <sighs> we don't recommend. No. Nope. At all. So why do we still offer them if we just shut our... Because people like it. Ben likes them. Ben so. loves them. So and we're doing it just for Ben? No, people actually like... A lot of people actually seem to like unedited things. and I cringe at like the thought... Like it's like behind the scenes porn. I know, but yeah. I cringe at the thought of the things that I say that people are listening Listen, to. The un- think of it this way. The unedited are, are, is the blooper reel. Yes. Okay, so we're done. Okay, so... Uh, you can get all that for five dollars a month. You can join us on the episode and an episode, just mm-hmm. like Ben and Katarina have. Yep. And to do all that, you can be cool and go to patreon.com/ironwood. Sign up today. 
Uh, if you're looking for us online, you can find all the links to all of our stuff at our website, iceandfirepod.com. Yep. The awesomest Ice and Fire URL mm-hmm. in existence. The one Indeed. and only. <laughs> the one true <laughs> URL for Ice and Fire Pods. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. I wasn't going there. <laughs> Listen, we got lucky. That fucking awesome uh, name. You can also find us on the Twitters. I am at Maester Ironwood. I am at Lady underscore Wyvern. And I am at Widow Wolfsbane. So until next time, when we get back into some Winterfell with Bran, Mm -hmm. we will talk to you then. Bye. 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 I'm so proud of you. You let me go first.